Now this is case um, 29, the final case. This is a this is subcutaneous fat with no skin over it. It's a, a fat pad biopsy. When there is a clinical suspicion for amyloidosis, systemic amyloidosis, um, it's uh, desirable to prove it with a biopsy. So the question becomes, especially if the patient doesn't have obvious skin lesions, some patients with systemic amyloid get periocular hemorrhage or they get other, uh, other skin abnormalities that are suspicious for amyloid, but some patients don't have any obvious skin abnormality. So then the question is, we need to biopsy some tissue in hopes of finding some amyloid deposits. So the area that's often suggested the biopsy is the abdominal fat pad, the subcutaneous fat from the abdomen. Sometimes people will do fine needle aspirate or deep punch biopsy, like a double punch. I would argue that the ideally the best way, if you really want it to rule out amyloid and you have a high suspicion clinically, is if you're going to do a fat pad biopsy of the abdomen, do an incisional surgical biopsy and take out a good sized chunk of subcutaneous fat. Like this piece here is probably... You know, I don't know exactly how big this was, but this is probably a centimeter or one to two centimeters across a uh, piece of fat from an incision. And the reason for that is that the, the amyloid is, is not, you can't tell where the amyloid will be deposited. It's, it's not uniform, and you may get focal deposits in between the adipocytes. You may get focal deposits in the, the walls of vessels. Ideally, you want to see the subcutaneous fat, and you want to see some thick-walled vessels. And the more of that you have, the better your chances are of making sure you find amyloid if it's there. So if there's only a tiny chunk of fat, I may not see any amyloid, but I, am I sure it's not a false negative? I'm not. So here's a good example. Look at this. The, the fat here really looks pretty much normal to me. That fat looks totally normal. Over here, look at all this stuff. This is amyloid in here. There's some, some, some amyloid deposits. The, the bright red here is blood. But there's some amyloid depositing in here in between collagen. Sorry, the, the darker red here, these are collagen bundles. The, the pink here in between, not light pink. I misspoke. I'm sorry. The, the light pink here is the amyloid. And then for contrast, those are some thick uh, collagen bundles. And then here in the vessel wall, there are some cracks and some pink. So right there, right at the edge of this muscular wall of this vessel, that's probably some amyloid there. I'm not totally sure, but it's suspicious. Let's look over here. We got a different view, a kind of a, the vessel was kind of cut at the very edge there. Here we're cutting right through the middle of it. And there's some pink stuff. That could be amyloid. I'm not totally sure. So it could be in the wall of vessels, and it can also be in between the fat or in between the collagen. So um, when we get these specimens, we usually routinely do a, uh, a thioflavin T stain. Some people will do a Congo red stain. It depends on what works best in your lab, what you have access to. That right there is looking pretty suspicious. There's cracks and pale pink stuff that's kind of homogenous in the wall of the vessel. That looks suspicious for amyloid to me. So I think we have a stain here. So this is Congo red. So in this case, Congo red, here's the control tissue, which was from, um, I believe this was kidney. Oh, I'm sorry, I may be telling you wrong. If this was Congo red or, yeah, this was Congo red. Not able to be. Here you can see the perivascular deposits of homogenous amyloid with cracks, densely staining. Uh, uh, usually it looks kind of a, a bright uh, or a salmon pink color, but here it's kind of looking more orangey, and it may be, um, it may just be the, the staining quality here or the scan quality. I also wondered if this could represent actually an amyloid P stain, but in the answer sheet it's labeled as being Congo red. But Congo red usually looks more of a pink color than this. Problem I have is that Congo red it, it seems to be kind of variable and has high background staining sometimes, so it can make it hard. And unless you have a bright enough light source on your scope, getting the apple green biofringence that everyone teaches you about in med school, getting that to work properly is quite challenging, I find. And normal collagen will have kind of a yellowy green uh, biofringence automatically to it. And so it can make it really hard, for, in my opinion, to tell real amyloid apart from background collagen. So that's why I've really found the thioflavin T to be better in my experience. So try it out if you want. So uh, here we can see the deposits in the vessel wall. They are staining here on this amyloid stain. There's like 
but it's kind of hard. Look at the muscle. The muscle also looks kind of dark. I agree this is darker and the muscle is lighter, but it's, it's a challenging stain to interpret because of the background. And it's, I think, the same thing over, over here where you're seeing dark staining here that looks different from the collagen. But it's hard. I think uh, you probably would agree with me. It's kind of hard to sort out. And uh, the last point is that it is focal. It, it is in the wall of the vessels here, like kind of wrapping around the outer wall. But in the fat in between, there's not really any amyloid. This is, I, I would argue, this is negative here. So that's the reason that it's important to get a big enough sample, ideally to get a thicker muscular walled vessel if you're doing a fat pad biopsy for amyloid, because it is it can be quite focal sometimes. And the last thing I would point out that was something I didn't recognize until well into my training is that sometimes you can get the extensive amyloid deposits in the abdominal fat where you look at it and it's obvious amyloid. It's a huge sheet of amyloid encasing fat, wrapping vessels, everything. And sometimes it presents as a mass clinically and it'll get removed as rule out lipoma. So it's not like this. It's like the best ever amyloid you could imagine, not this kind of subtle focal finding. But that kind of amyloid is, it, you can see there when it makes like a big mass of, of extensive amyloid deposition, you can see that in the abdominal fat of patients with diabetes from insulin injection. And so it's insulin type amyloid, um, and that's from a chronic insulin injection in the same areas of the abdomen. And uh, some of that insulin accumulates and deposits protein. And if you do mass spec on that, they will actually show that it's insulin type amyloid rather than light chain amyloid. So um, I think it's important to know that because uh, the first time I saw that, I was like, whoa, this is insane amount of amyloid. And then we uh, checked in the patient had diabetes and on mass spec, it was insulin type uh, amyloid rather than light chain. So I've now seen a handful of cases of that, uh, sometimes where it was clinically thought to represent a tumor, a lipoma or some other tumor because it was such a big nodule in the abdominal wall. And microscopically, it was extensive amyloid deposition, but it was a uh, uh, the insulin type amyloid, which is not associated with any systemic uh, amyloid deposition. So I think that's something to to be on the lookout for if you've never seen that before. It was really impressive. Uh, the cases I've seen of that were were not subtle, to say the least. They were extensive. So so just so you know, that's one one other thing you could find in the abdominal fat that's amyloid, but not associated with systemic. So if you're still here after two and a half hours or more of all these deposition diseases, I applaud you and I hope you've learned something along the way. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.